Hey everybody, um, once again really sorry that my Christmas video this year had to be cancelled but I thought I'd make it up by doing some creator commentary on last year's Christmas video, How KHF Saved Christmas. Um, if you haven't watched the original version of this video already I suggest doing so before you watch this commentary, although quite honestly you're probably better off just watching somebody else's videos because they'll be a lot better than the crap I put up. <laughs> but yeah, I thought I'd just talk about uh, what the thought process behind this video was and why certain things happen the way they do. Um, this is of course the first appearance of Emma Sky's sister. Um, with Lana's voice, I actually tried to make it sound a bit more mature than um, than Emma's voice, because obviously Lana's the older and more mature sister. Um, a lot of people still don't know that it is, in fact, me who does the voice of Emma Sky, of both Sky sisters, in fact. But obviously I up the pitch on my computer when I do the voice, because in its raw form it kind of sounds like this. Hello everybody, it's me, Emma Sky. And that just sounds creepy. Well, well, the voice still sounds creepy even after I up the pitch, but it sounds uh, more suitable. <laughs> but yeah, basically the whole idea behind this uh, video was um, just basically here just telling the most ridiculous um, story possible. Like, it sounds like complete and total rubbish, but um, obviously it turns out to be true in the end, which just blows Emma's mind. Uh, so yeah, um, there were meant to be implications in this opening scene that uh, KHF and Lana do know each other quite well, that they're quite well acquainted. Um, I don't know if that comes across or not, but yeah, that was uh, what I was, uh, there were meant to be implications of that. Um, and that will be expanded on in a later video. Um, this is, interesting enough, this is actually uh, one of the last videos where I, I think it is the last video where I actually wear a, just a plain t-shirt as KHF. Um, I think in all subsequent videos I actually wear proper shirts as KHF because I just thought it would look nicer. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, what Emma says here is actually a throwback to what I did uh, the previous Christmas on my old channel, but of course what happened on my old channel is no longer canon. Um, but I, it was just meant to be a neat little funny throwback to uh, what happened. Um, <laughs> oh, I love these! I love doing these jokes where Emma's just like silent before uh, she responds. She's like she's letting the ridiculous things KHF says just sink in <laughs> before she replies. Uh, but yeah, the point is like this so sounds like the most unbelievable story possible, but. Um, <laughs> That's how it's true. Um, of course, Lana, you know, hasn't, doesn't experience all the crap that Emma goes through with of all the ridiculousness, so obviously she's more inclined to believe it than Emma is. Um, so, yeah, um, so this is where the story begins. Um, this joke, this opening joke with Keija flirting with all the women, this actually, um, I actually, this is the only joke I actually regret doing. Um, Especially with some of the stuff you're going to be finding about finding out about Kejev later on, it actually makes no sense in in um, when when it actually makes no sense when that stuff comes in. So I can't speak today. Um, or I can't speak in general. Um, but uh, yeah, um, yeah, this doesn't make a lot of sense given some of the stuff you're going to find out about KHF. So I actually regret doing this joke, I didn't think it through, but um... <laughs> um when this video came out, a lot of people made the joke that KHF is saving Christmas without any legs, because, like, um, the image I used doesn't, isn't a full body image. <laughs> so it looks like KHF doesn't have any legs, or... <laughs> Whereas with some of the others, they did have full body images, <laughs> but yeah, people were making jokes in the comments that <laughs> KHF's saving the world without, um, any legs. Same with Tomaki, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what was I going to say? Um, oh yeah, um, that joke that just passed with Cloud turning around and hitting KHF with his, with his sword, that actually wasn't in the original script, I just kind of added that in as a neat little thing when I turned the Cloud puppet around because I realised that the sword was there so I just thought I'd add it in as a funny little thing. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, and uh, this coming up, yeah, that that's, uh, that is meant to be a Scott Pilgrim reference uh, right there. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, not really sure what I can comment on here, um, 
I didn't think doing this commentary through actually. <laughs> I thought I thought I'd have tons of stuff to talk about, but I did. oh yeah, um, uh, a lot of people ask me uh, um, how I do the puppets, but the puppets are it's just simply just um, some <laughs> um, just yeah the puppets are just simply some printed off images attached to pencils. That's basically the long and short of it. And the backgrounds are actually attached to uh, my wall, and then I put my camera in front of it and zoom in and. Bada boom, bada bing, you got a puppet stage, you got a puppet show. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's all very, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, but interesting to note about uh, Zordon here, um, while all the other puppets are attached to pencils, uh, Zordon's actually attached to a glue stick, because I ran out of pencils, like the glue sticks you put in um, glue guns. Yeah, that's actually what Zordon and I think Alpha as well are attached to. Because uh, <laughs> I ran out of pencils, so I just had to uh, get the next best thing. <laughs> well, the only other thing I had available. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, this is one of my favorite jokes in the whole video. <laughs> Shut the hell up, Alpha. Nobody liked you. Because it's true, like, growing up when I was watching Power Rangers, nobody liked Alpha. Everybody hated Alpha. He was annoying. Um, he was annoying because he'd go around and go, yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone hated Alpha. So, yeah, that was one of my favorite jokes to do. Yeah, of course, this is one of the ridiculous concepts that of the story that, you know, Kirchhoff was contacted by Zordon to save Christmas. You know, all trying to make it sound completely unbelievable. Um, yeah, some people asked if Tomoki saying it's hero time was meant to be a reference to uh, Ben 10, but no it wasn't because I've actually never watched that show in my life. Um, it was, um, I've never watched that show, that wasn't meant to be a reference, it was just meant to be Tomoki saying some really cheesy line and Kirchhoff just getting pissed off of it for, of course, saying something really cliche, so. Yeah, it wasn't meant to be a reference to anything. I mean, our team consists of an insane otaku, a mentally disturbed mercenary, a flamboyant host, and a demon whose powers are limited in this form. Well then, why don't you just go into your true form and burst down the door? I don't want to risk wasting Rosette's life force. We may not have a lot of choice if we want to get in, Crodo. Perhaps I <laughs> can be able to... <laughs> oh yes, <Louis>. Jeremy, <laughs> the time-traveling camel. <laughs> Oh, there's actually, uh, there's actually a more complicated story behind how Jeremy came to be. It's actually a really interesting story there, but honestly, it would take way too long. It would, I'd pretty much spend the rest of this commentary talking about the origins of Jeremy, so I'm not gonna go into the whole thing here, but yeah, there is actually a much, much, uh, deeper story behind how Jeremy came into being. <laughs> like, this goes way back. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that old joke, I wish I had my friends back. <laughs> uh, when, I, when I was a kid, I used to think that was the funniest joke in existence. <laughs> uh, uh, don't know why they even bothered bringing Tomoki along, in fact, because uh, unlike the other three, he doesn't have any combat experience whatsoever. Um, oh, yes, the... Um, the creeper joke. This was actually one of the uh, first jokes I uh, came up with for this video. This joke about the creeper um, um, and Tomoki being the live bait to lure it over to the um, fortress. Of course, um, the whole thing I didn't actually think through because creepers. The whole point of them is that they creep up on you. You don't hear them coming until they're about to explode. So, didn't actually think that joke uh, through. So, um, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> the creeper shouldn't actually have been making any noise. <laughs> I just love that uh, image of Tomoki just having, having the um, creeper explode on him. Uh, of course, we had to check in with the villains to see what they were doing. Um, oh yeah, a lot, a lot of people were pissed off with me that I put Kyosoma as one of the evil people who have kidnapped Santa. Um, a lot of people were pissed off about that. Um, all I'm gonna say about this, guys, or, um, without giving too much away, all I'm gonna say is, well, things are going to get interesting with Kyosoma later on. That's all I'm gonna say. Just. 
things will get interesting with him later on, so don't be too mad about what happens here, because things are going to get interesting later on, and um, the, uh, people are probably going to figure out what I mean by that. Um, because <laughs> you people are, <laughs> uh, you people are smart. You're probably going to figure out what I mean by that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So don't be too mad about what happens here. Um, <laughs> that joke that just passed about Ion and Sephiroth. Um, that's actually one of my, <laughs> that's actually one of my favorite jokes in the whole video because I just think it's just brilliant. This um idea of um, you know, these two really, you know, so, these two. Really, really evil people just high-fiving each other about how evil they are. I just thought it was a really ridiculous concept. Oh yeah, of course, the spoiler alert, because this is... Which, I had to... Uh, I, it's just a play, play on the way people still think they need to give spoilers about this. The one Final Fantasy VII spoiler that everybody knows. Um, this thing with the Aris Ghost, actually. Um, this was actually the first time in my videos I got to use my green screen. Yeah, I do in fact have a green screen, I just haven't found use for it yet. And it's not an incredibly great uh, green screen. Um, it's, not, it's not great, but um, yeah, I haven't found any proper use for it besides this video, of course, to do the effect of um, Aris's ghost. Um, yeah, the, the spoiler alert, it's just basically taking the mic because people still think they need to give spoiler alerts about Aris' death. It's like, it's the one video game spoiler that everybody knows. Even people who haven't played Final Fantasy VII know it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, just a, it was just meant to be a little joke on that. Um, and of course, it's where everyone beats up... Uh, Okay so, okay, so again, again, things are going to get interesting things, so don't be too yeah, beat off about this. And of course, this is what Kyo would actually do, try to take everybody on by himself. Because, uh, oh, the, um, backdrop actually shook a little bit there when, I, when the puppets went down. Don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> uh, that comment that, uh, Tamaki just made, that's actually a reference to, uh, what was, to a, um, WWE storyline that had been going on that year, um, it was something uh, um, CM Punk had said to Triple H on a um, uh, panel at, uh, I think it was Comic-Con, when uh, Punk, uh, the story was that Punk had left the company. Um, careful. These two may look like ordinary girls, but they can pack quite a punch. Leave this to me, gentlemen. Tomiki, what are you doing? It's time to put the old host charm to work. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Tom, he put his host charm to work on, um, oh, what are they called, um, Tomoyo and, uh, and Kyo from Clannard, you know, the two, two people who you wouldn't think would fall for it, but, um, you know, Tom, he's just like, oh, yeah, that made a lot of people laugh at the way Kyo just tackles Tomoyo. Uh... <laughs> yes, that's just how charming Tamaki is. He can win over even even those two. <laughs> yeah, so well, so that was what that was one advantage to to them bringing Tamaki along, I guess. And of course, the f fight that inevitably had to happen, the fight that has been done to death, uh, Cloud versus Sephiroth. Of course, this had to happen at some point in this video. Um, uh, it's never actually been explained yet just why kid, why Sephiroth just wanted to, wanted to ruin Christmas, but look, nothing makes sense in Christmas specials. Yeah, that's about the most explanation you're going to get about it then. Um, yeah, not really sure my, much else I can say. Of course, Cloud would want to take Sephiroth on the loan, and... Um, <laughs> uh, of course, because these are just puppets and there's there's not really a lot I can do as far as battles go between them, you know, obviously I cut out and, you know, I gave Black Luster's excuses as to why there weren't going to be any fights, you know, just to be funny about it, but, you know, obviously, you know, it's just single image puppets, there's not a lot I can do as far as uh, fighting goes between them. Yeah, <laughs> and I, you know, so I had KHF say this about the whole thing. Um, <laughs> it's true, it's true, if you've seen one Cloud and Sephiroth fight, you've seen them all, because, um, 
Square have a way about of doing that battle to death. I'm so glad you could make it. Cut the crap, demon. Where's Santa? Did the two of you not ponder just why the four of us unionized ourselves and went to all this trouble? Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. And of course what Ion says here, well, he says some interesting stuff about some things that are going to come up later in future KHF videos. He uses some interesting terminology. Um... Oh boy, here we go. <laughs> yeah, KHF, um... I want to hear this long-winded explanation as to everything he just wants to um, get up there and fight Ion. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, Ion, Ion's cho choice of words in this whole scene, look, everything Ion says here is intentional. He says nothing by accident. Um, if you'll notice here, I actually slowed down the um, video so that the shaking of the puppet to symbolise that he was talking um, actually fits in with what he's saying. <laughs> I do that quite a bit in these kinds of videos because I find when I film them and I shake them, you know, to symbolise they're talking, I've, uh, it doesn't match up with how the actual line goes, so I have to either slow it down or speed it up. <laughs> but yeah, nothing Ion says here is accidental. In fact, nothing that happens in the plot of these videos is by accident. Everything um, happens with intent. By joy is gathered up by him, and he in turn uses it to spread joy back to the people. A never ending cycle. But tell me, what do you suppose would happen if someone were to break this cycle? It would let the energy run loose. Exactly. So, yeah, if you notice something small, like you hear the word spiral energy or something like that, um, it's never accidental. There's always an intent, there's always intentions for it. That's all I'm gonna say. Nothing. Nothing in this plot happens by accident. Surely you know me better than that. That is exactly what I intend to do. We won't let you do this, Ion. You're too late, Chrono. Uh, Soon the process will be complete. And I'm not really sure what else I can say. Um, um, not really a lot going on, just Cloud and... Uh, not Cloud, and um, Chrono, and I, I, I can't... I shouldn't have done this so early in the morning, I can't speak today. <laughs> Of course, Ke Ke somehow managed to sneak up on Ion without him noticing and um, push him over whatever balcony it's implied they're standing on. This video is dumb. <laughs> of course, uh, cluing you in on the stuff you missed. Oh, the whole, oh, it's implied that what we didn't show you was so amazing joke. Uh, oh yeah, this bit that's coming up, um, this unmasking thing. Um, a lot of people ask me if the reason that it's Kimura, um, Kimura under the mask is because him and Ion in the English dubs are voiced by the same person. Um, actually no, this was actually completely coincidental. Um, I, uh, um, it was complete coincidental. It wasn't until after I finished filming the video that I realized that Ion and Kimura in the English dubs actually have the same voice actor. So the fact that it was Kimura, and it's completely by accident. Alright, that is something that happened by accident, okay. <laughs> that is one of the few things that happened by accident in my video. So I just got, um, done saying how, um, <laughs> how everything happens for a reason, but that was one of the rare cases of something happening by accident. <laughs> <laughs> the self-destruct mechanism. <laughs> uh, because there has to be one last moment of peril. Oh, if you look carefully to the left of the screen here, you can actually see the. You can actually see my. Yeah, look, if you look to the left of the screen, you can see the edge of the image. Uh, I was, that was pretty bad of me there. Um, I didn't because um, I couldn't. I couldn't actually see that in the viewfinder of my camera. I didn't notice that. And <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Of course, John Bon Jovi comes to save the day. <laughs> uh, again, just meant to be random twists and turns to make this out like a completely ridiculous story filled with time traveling camels and celebrities coming to save them. It's, yeah, um, anybody who knows me knows that I'm a huge fan of Bon Jovi. That's why I did that whole thing with um, with John Bon Jovi coming to save them. Uh, not a lot of people noticed the, the red F.A.T. joke that I made with uh, Santa there. Um, 
I was I was surprised nobody uh, commented on that. No, yeah. People uh, notice that, but then again, they were just saved. <laughs> Team McGulls were just saved by John Bon Jovi, so I guess uh, they were just <laughs> people just letting that sink in. <laughs> <laughs> Emma and Lana just at a loss for words. Because <laughs> I say most ridiculous Christmas story possible. Yeah. Uh, I actually agree with Emma Sky there. Um, uh, and of course, here come Tima Corson to confirm that the story was in fact true. Christmas last year. Yeah, last year. Turned out it was Kimora behind it all disguised as I am. But that doesn't make any sense! Uh, and yeah, um, here comes Tomoki. The uh, Tomoki wig is actually the hardest one to get all my hair under, because obviously it's so small, it's actually the hardest one to get my all my hair under. So oftentimes you will see my hair poking out of this wig, because it's just the hardest one to put on. Um, Um, and of course my chrono costume is the most, uh, perhaps the most inaccurate because um, I don't actually have a proper chrono wig yet so I had to use a wig that um, already did have that came close enough to his uh, hairstyle because um, a chrono wig actually costs more than what I paid for the chrono costume which I thought was ridiculous. Um, granted there's a lot, there's a lot to chrono's hairstyle but um, now, at the time, I didn't have the money to pay for both a wig that cost more than what I was paying for the costume, so... I don't know, maybe in the future I'll invest in a better Chrono wig, but for now you'll just get have to... Just do, just use your imagination with the um, Chrono costume. And of course, all Christmas specials have to end with a cheesy joke with everybody just laughing, but... Um, <laughs> sorry, I've been droning on so long, but... Uh, yeah, um... But yeah, I hope you all have a very Merry Christmas, and I'll see you in the new year, where we'll be uh, listening to KHF's reaction to an all-time classic anime. Um, again, not going to say what it is, but you will not be disappointed with, um, with what he's going to be watching. <laughs> so yeah, I'll see you guys in the new year. Merry Christmas.